My dear sisters and brothers, this is the first time I have a rose robe here. So somebody said, Jos, you look good in rose or pink. So anyway, the reason why we have a rose robe, number one, today, we never had a robe, rose-colored robe, until today. We just got it just a few days ago. Vicky decided that she needs to see me in rose before I leave. So she decided to get this rose robe. And why? Why do we use this rose robe during Lent? It is because uh, twice a year, uh, one during Lent and once during Advent, there is this uh, practice in the Western Christianity because of the season of the 40 days of prayer and fasting, we have to have a celebration in between. And so, so that we break up that monotony of fasting and prayer. And I want to tell you, let us not break that up. But the truth is, we need to have some sort of a celebration. It is to help people not to be depressed and saddened about what is going on during this time of Lent. It is also to invite people to celebrate, even in the midst of our repentance and pain and struggle and difficulties, we still have enough reason to celebrate, and this just simply represents that celebration that we need during Lent. All right. So... Uh, so during the fast and uh, time of Lent, I saw a church bulletin that said, the fasting and prayer conference include, includes meals. <laughs> the, sermon this, <laughs> the, the sermon this morning is this. Jesus walks on the water, and the sermon tonight is searching for Jesus. <laughs> because he walked on water. Nice, nice reminders in the bulletin. Remember in prayer the many who are sick of our community. <laughs> smile at someone who is hard to love. So if you smile at someone, okay. Don't let the worry kill you. Let your church help. <laughs> Those are really nice, nice announcements. Anyway, today, are there things in your life that you would like to forget? or roll away, things that have happened in your life, you think of and you say, you know what, I really do not want to remember them. I want to roll them away. You know, that on that day after the death and resurrection of Jesus, at the resurrection of Jesus, it is said, somebody, they don't know who exactly it was, who rolled away the stone as he came out. And also, somebody, some people rolled away the stone from the tomb of Lazarus. So rolling away is an imagery that we are used to in the scriptures. It is something that we all have to do. I look back into my life, I used to think that I was a very holy, really nice guy when I was a monk, you know, in the monastery. And then I changed my mind after I got married. <laughs> Holiness is easy when you don't have to put up with people. It's when you have to put up with people Holiness becomes really, really difficult. When I'm a monk, I can close the door at, the, at night and be by myself in my bed. But when I'm married, I cannot close the door because she's going to walk into the same bed. And so living with someone is difficult. Being with people, it is difficult. And so when we repent, when we want to roll away things, what we really do need to look at is ourselves. And what are the things that we could roll away? Cheap grace is the grace we bestow on ourselves. Cheap grace is the preaching of forgiveness without requiring repentance. Baptism without a church discipline. Communion without confession. Cheap grace is grace without discipleship. Grace without the cross, grace without Jesus Christ, living and incarnate. Living and incarnate. How do Jesus live in this world, incarnated in our bodies? That is grace that we do need to look into. Right now, we are do going to do an exercise in which we live and accept our incarnated self as the children of God. We are the incarnated reality as the children of God in today's world. As Shannon Alder says, your dignity can be mocked, abused, compromised, and toyed with, lowered, and even badmouthed. 
but it can never be taken from you. You have the power today to reset your boundaries, restore your image, start fresh with renewed values, and rebuild what has happened to you in the past. So today we are going to restore our image and start afresh. I'm going to take a moment of silence as we reflect on those things that we need to roll away. The boundaries that we need to reset. The images that need to be restored. Renew ourselves and say goodbye to behaviors that requires a circumcision. So I want to, uh, uh, oh, there we go. She start talking. It's my Siri. She heard something that I said she didn't like. So, so today, if you look into your bulletin, there is a piece of paper in your bulletin. If you will pull that out. Yes. And we are going to go into total silence for a few minutes. And before we go into that silence, Jeremy is going to ring the church bell that he rings at the time of consecration when we go into this time of deep silence. And that paper is for us to write down, there is pencil right in front of you, write down those things that need to be rolled away, that you can think of, the sins or the difficulties or the problems that you may have with one another, not about how secretly we have failed. No, it is about relationship issues that need to be thrown away, that need to be rolled away. Write them down, let no one else see it, and then fold it. I'm going to ask Jeremy, as we go into this deep silence, that we write them down. Jeremy, if you will please ring the bell. If you have written them down, take your time, please fold it and come forward and drop that in that vessel right up front. Please fold the paper, but you take your time. As we are going to sing, Jesus, remember me, the choir will chant that in the background.
the people of Israel, as they entered the land of Canaan, realized there is nobody who left Egypt walking into the promised land. Nobody who left Egypt walked into the promised land. All those who walked into the promised land were new, young people who didn't know what happened to them other than the stories that they were told. So they remembered the stories because somebody or another shared them with them. It's something like we young Americans in our country being told of World War I and World War II, and some people without the knowledge of history dismissing it as a fiction. Young people thought it could be a fiction. It is like the Holocaust as a fiction of some creative thinkers, Pearl Harbor, a Hollywood movie plot, or January 6th, the insurgency, a political demonstration. Because we fail to share history with the young, with the people that we want to grow into wonderful citizens. That's how some of the young Israelites thought of the days of Egypt that it was simply a fiction. So Joshua decided, I'm going to help them remember this. Remember this day. And so he invites all young men of Israel walking into the land of Canaan for circumcision, to remind them that God was with them as they walked out of Egypt. This is why we are reading the story of Joshua today. Here they are at the threshold of a new life in this land of promise. And Joshua reminds the young men with circumcision that God, in fact, brought them this far. Don't you ever forget it. And that's the same lesson the Lord gives us. The Lord has brought us this far. Let us never forget it. Now you know why I asked you to write down those things that need to be rolled away, that need to be burned, because we all have a history, and it will be burned. It should be rolled away. You didn't get to this place of your life without help. God was with you every step of the way. Sometimes our pride and our self-grandeur, our shame and our fear, stops us from holding God's hand like a child would hold God's hand, like the young men who left his father's security and ended up eating with the pigs in the story of the prodigal son we just heard, that sometimes we leave that hand and walk away and wallow in our own misery and pain. It is time to return. It took a while for him to recognize the shame and disgrace that could be removed in a second if he could come back home. So my point in all of this is to say, we all have something to roll away. When we roll them away, we have a new light of resurrection that happens. And you and I need to work hard. Remember the history. Nothing has happened without God's hand behind it. If I could actually receive it and walk with the Lord, holding on to the finger of God as my father, as my mother. So as we enter into this time of Lent, on this day of celebration, let us remember that God has blessed us abundantly. It is time for us to roll those stones away and celebrate Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.